Here we have a case of a printed digital photograph that was printed on an inkjet ink printer with glossy paper. Now, of course, I had the original in my hand, so I can confirm it. But you can also tell by zooming in closely and examining, here I am with my pointer, examining how these dots are laid out, and that's in the inkjet. And, of course, the digital, we have some pixelation going on here. If you look right in close, you'll see how blocky it gets. So... It was most likely a low resolution uh, photograph and then a s small printed original on a so so, a, a very poor uh, printing process. So the goal is to make this look better. I'll uh, make my layers palette a little smaller here and duplicate the background layer and we'll just keep that name background copy hit OK there you have it that's the layer on which we're gonna make a lot of our changes do a cleanup zoom in close you know 300 percent is a good number let's throw on the grid view show grid and I've set my grid to be one inch uh, within uh, one inch subdivisions and go about cleaning up with the clone stamp tool some of these spots now of course if that's too easy for you or too how can I say cumbersome for you I always like to use history brush in a situation like this up here in the menu filter noise dust and scratches of course when I say use the history brush we want to use it in conjunction with uh, a dust and scratches command hit the preview off and on and you can see that it gets rid of a lot of the spots let's increase the radius to uh, I think three is too much and bring the threshold up to two and that threshold will tighten the difference between the tighten the threshold of the difference between the blurred or the dust and scratch affected areas and the areas that are not so the threshold as close as possible to the uh, uh, radius trying not to go too high above the radius and in this case it works in some cases when you have such a uh, poor photograph uh, poor quality as far as poor quality printed photograph I will not call this a poor photograph because the person that shot it, it it means a lot to them but we will say at least the quality of the uh, the reproduction of it we want to uh, sometimes see if that whole dust and scratches effect can be applied to the whole image so we're going to hit OK and let's zoom out we want to be looking at the whole picture turn off the grid I'll do uh, control or Apple quote to do that and in the history palette click the one step above dust and scratches Let's, let's look at this little boy over here when we do that and now click on the dust and scratches state very little difference so we're going to keep it but then we're going to go back with the history brush around the eyes just to make sure toolbox history brush not art history brush check our options we want 100% opacity and we want normal for the blending mode a nice big brush hit the bracket key let me just go right here on his face there I made a mistake 
I did not set my source in the history. So let's go back one step right there. And now we set our source, which was before dust and scratches, which was right up here. So I'm going to click right there, right before we apply dust and scratches. And I'm going to just going to paint right here. You know, and I, I like to focus on the eyes when we do this, or the details, maybe of the fingers if possible. Okay? Because the eyes and the details, this is where people look at a photograph. Great. For those who are not familiar, healing brush is right here. And just work on this area. And of course, work within the grids so you can get it done methodically, not waste a whole lot of time. It might be a little light there, but that's a little distracting. So just go through the picture and, and finish up. Get all those spots. Well, we're finished with the cleanup. In the layer palette, turn off the background layer and then turn it back on. And you can see the before and the after. I believe this is a glare right by the gentleman's uh, nose for his eyeglasses, but it was so distracting. I said, I'm going to take it out. We got to be careful when we take things out because it's a part of the image. It's part of history. But sometimes in a case like this, if, if the photographer says, look, I just want this moment. I want you to... or if that's what you thought, you wanted the moment, you don't want these other things to distract from it, then go ahead and get rid of it. But see, I didn't get rid of all the lights, so before, after. Great. So what's next? Turn off the grid. Control or Apple quote. Let's double check, make sure we got everything we needed. There's a little, it looks like a little inkjet line here. I'll clean that up with the healing brush that we used just a few seconds ago to help clean up the other spots. And I'm going to go over here too. Just to make it a little more even. Now obviously the color's off. So there's a lot of ways to color correct. For, for my students, I like to start them off in levels and that's what I'm going to have you do. So... Let's do a, what's called an adjustment layer. Down here, this little circle, this half black, half white circle. Go to levels. We do each channel, one channel at a time. Stay away from that RGB composite channel. And see how I changed it right there. I want to move these top sliders, the white and the black sliders to the edges of this histogram which is a mountain I like to call it a mountain and then we go to that green channel we move that over for the shadow the white is for the highlight then we go to the blue we go to the moving that black shadow and the white highlight now I'll move this box over to the side a little bit and hit the preview box so you can see before, after, before, after. Hit OK. And we're much closer. Not perfect, but we're closer. All right. Fine tune the color. In the layers palette, we'll double click that histogram icon it'll bring up our old levels dialog box but it'll have the same 